This is One on One. John Russell is a social studies teacher at Burlington City High School, part of our classroom close-up series in cooperation with the NJA. Good to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Uh, we're about to see a piece of video, again, part of our partnership with the New Jersey Teachers Educational Association. Um, classroom close-up seen every week on uh, NJ TV, a terrific series. Set up the series we're about to see, teaching about Holocaust history with Legos. That's right. So uh, I was teaching a course called Humanities, and I uh, took it over mid-year and was looking for some interesting ways to engage students, and I came across this uh, Polish artist who designed a Lego concentration camp series for an art contest, and uh, kind of used it as a warm-up one day, and it just exploded, and I said, I've got to make this a full lesson, yeah. Yeah, well, the video speaks for itself, and by the way, if you want to get more information on where you can check out Classroom Close-Up every week on public television, Go on the NJEA website. Um, well, check that out right there. And also the NJTVonline.org website as well. Our partners at Public Television. Classroom close up, John Russell. Very innovative stuff. Let's go to the clip. reactions to what you see. We're looking at the limits of artistic freedom and expression, and we're looking at it through the medium of the Holocaust. When they walk into the room, I start off with like this gallery walk, where I just have the images up. I don't say anything about them. And they just go around the room and kind of write down their initial reactions, and they're usually all very negative, or very shocked, or they think they're real. How many people have played with Legos in here? It was an um, artist's representation of the Holocaust through Legos. And we kind of discussed about how is it moral for this guy to do this with Legos. So basically in the mid-90s, Lego was running this like international contest uh, to use Legos to build some kind of work of art. And this artist, Zbigniew Libera, he basically told Lego he was going to build a hospital. They provided the bricks to him, and then he built this concentration camp series. It kind of like struck home for me because, you know, you're not used to seeing something like evil represented with something that you've always found was good and like wholesome. When you get Legos, you're just like trying to have some fun, not think back on a terrible event that happened. When you paint a picture, you're telling a story. This is just another way of telling a story. Okay, good point. So art is definitely part of it, telling the story and what the artist is trying to say. It's like the opposite of what Legos are supposed to be. I thought it was real. I thought that these came out on the shelves and kids really played with these, so it kind of shocked me a little bit. That's kind of the point of this, you know, is to shock them into really thinking about the core values and the core history here. It's really a way to encourage young people to think about real-world topics, to engage students, to strengthen their critical thinking skills, and to bring history to life. For creating lessons like this one, John Russell was recognized as New Jersey's 2012 Humanities Teacher of the Year. What we are looking for is to see a teacher who is in the humanities, um, so you know, a social studies or a history teacher or an um, English literature teacher, who's really thinking about how to connect their students to the material in a way that gets them thinking deeply about why is it important to study the past. So it was a nice way of kind of threading through methods of kind of humanistic inquiry, you know, how do you ask questions about the past, but then also connecting it to the present um, through this just really creative way. So we were very impressed by that. I think he was named Humanity Teacher of the Year because not only does he have a really good knowledge on the subject, but he also teaches it in a new way. It's not all classic book work. It's really interesting. And he creates these awesome lessons and stuff that you don't really see in a normal teacher. Chose this. By the way, we should make it clear that you were the Humanities Teacher of the Year bestowed by the New Jersey Council on the Humanities. I'm going to ask you something. What were you trying to accomplish when you shocked these kids through this exercise? And you did. I wanted to show kids <clears throat> and have them think about the fact that everything is in black and white in life. And, you know, we're looking at the Holocaust and there's lots of different, in different interpretations. Most people think the Holocaust negative, of course, obviously. Um, but then this artist did something 
to shock people and rethink what the Holocaust was all about. He was Polish. Poland was, you know, hit so hard by the Holocaust. And he did this to shock and to get people to think, what does the Holocaust mean today? Why do we still study it? Why does it matter so much? And, you know, for my kids who are 17 years old, you know, maybe they don't see the relevance still in something like that. And I think they do when they see it through. Where does the discussion go after that? Well, it's basically about artistic <clears throat> license and freedom. What's appropriate, what's not? Are there barriers set up? You know, and how far can we, can we you know, get close to those barriers? And when do we cross a line? Did this artist cross a line? Did he not? At the beginning of the lesson, they usually are outraged that Lego is being used to portray the Holocaust. By the end of it, they're starting to think of things like, hey, Lego produced a Cowboys and Indians series. Well, that's a genocide as well. So, you know, is Lego involved in this? I mean, how, how much is Lego, you know, taking things too far? How much are people taking things too far? There's so much going on with it. So, so humanities, people often see the humanities as somewhat abstract. You do not, do you? I don't, no. I see it as very um, concrete and ties into so many subject areas. And that's what I like about a class like this, is we can look at literature, we can look at art, you know, we can look at history. You look at There's current so events? Much. Oh, absolutely. Let me ask you, you have a game plan. Mm -hmm. You're working your lesson plan. Correct. An event happens in the news that clearly captures the interest of young people. We're doing this program in the summer of 2013. Okay. When um, an event, Trayvon Martin case, plays itself out, do you bring it into the classroom? Immediately. Immediately. You have to tie it into the classroom. It's current, it's relevant, it's hot. You have to? I have to do that. I have to get my kids excited and interested about learning, and these are things they're learning about every day, and I can tie it right in. That's humanities? It is. Where, again, I'll ask, where is it that you would like that discussion to go, or is that not part of your thinking, where it goes? Well, I'd like it to go, you know, obviously with civil rights, civil liberties, things like that, even tying it back to different, um, you know, topics in American history, but where it goes, the students will, will drive. Um, that's what makes it interesting and engaging for them. When did you know? I've asked every teacher who's ever come in here, sat in that seat, when did you know that you wanted, maybe even needed to teach? Um, probably in fifth grade, I knew <laughs> I wanted to teach. I had a, a dynamic social studies teacher, his name was Bert Stronsdorf, uh, retired. I'm a product of New Jersey's public education system, I'm proud of that. And, you know, he really made me interested in history and made it fun, exciting, and I knew I wanted to be a teacher like that. So fifth grade, I wanted to teach history. What do you see in these kids? In Burlington City? What do you see in these kids in your classroom? I see so much potential. I see kids that have worked hard and have really, um, you know, done a great job. And I see kids who are our future. And nothing excites me more than <clears throat> when some of these kids go on to be teachers, especially history teachers, and I had an impact on that. John Russell, you're the reason why we do this uh, series, Classroom Close-Up and Cooperation with Our Partners at the NJEA. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're in a wonderful profession, and uh, we're proud that people like you decide to do it. Well, keep mentoring you. others. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, Choose New Jersey, NJIT, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.